What? I need to learn how to use a kettle? What? I need to learn how to use a kettle? I need to learn how to use a kettle? Hmm. <laughs> I'm all done. Yes, we're doing a video on how to use a kettle. I know it sounds silly, but I assure you by the end of this video, you will change your mind. As a matter of fact, this is just episode one of a series of video I wanted to do, sharing secrets about Kung Fu tea brewing that only the pros know. These are tips and hacks that nobody is talking about, but so important to Gong Fu Tea Brewing. And learning these Gong Fu Tea techniques will really elevate your skills to the next level. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to be notified as soon as we have new content. You know, we always emphasize intuitive brewing rather than uh, stuck with the scales and thermometers. Uh, but sometimes because the word intuitive, people might mistake it as uh, brew tea however I like. Uh, it's not quite true. Intuitive brewing is not to brew tea blindly. It's the very opposite actually, is to fine tune every brewing detail to the specific tea that's in front of you. This requires practice uh, and knowledge and it is the essence of Gong Fu tea brewing. So, Talking about the level one of how to brew tea, maybe you just put hot water and tea. Maybe level two is figuring out how to brew green tea, how to brew black tea. Different tea types need different brewing skills. Level three might be how to brew longjing. It's different than how to brew bi luo chun. Well, this level, the ultimate level, is to really tailor the brewing for each tea. If you get 10 different longjing from different store, you will notice they're all different. How to brew each tea, how to bring the best out of each tea. And this is what we're talking about in this series about Gong Fu tea brewing. I'll be using this kettle uh, in this video for demonstration. This is the most uh, common, cheap, like $20 you can find in pretty much any store kind of kettle. And as I mentioned in previous video, this is way better kettle compared to gooseneck when you are doing Gong Fu tea brewing. I think in that video, I explained in theory why Gooseneck, be, uh, gooseneck kettle is not beautiful Gong Fu brew. And this video, I'll show you in action. While my kettle is boiling, let's talk about an interesting little topic. Somebody asked me, if I wanted my water to be at 80 degrees, should I bring that to a boil, then let it cool, or just bring the water temperature to 80 degrees and brew the tea without boiling? So the quote-unquote correct answer is bring the water to the boil, then let it cool. Because the water tastes quite different with it being boiled or not. Uh, in, usually in tea brewing, when, even when we want to lower the water temperature, usually we still bring that to a boil first, then let it cool down. So you can do a little experiment uh, at home and see if you can taste the difference of the raw water, like say tap, tap water or even uh, like a spring water. And another one is at room temperature. Uh, another one is you bring that to a boil and let it cool to the room temperature. You can really taste, at least I can really taste the difference between the two. So um, yeah. Uh, and I want to point out this kind of a video that could be a little bit overwhelming for people who just get into tea. Um, don't stress out. It's just a tea. 
you know, you can brew that however you like. It's not about right or wrong. It's about having fun. I'm those people who enjoy those fine tuning, little skills, the little nuance in taste. I'm having fun with it. The last thing you want with the tea is to stress out. Okay, my water is boiled. I can hear it click. Nothing wrong with this cheap kettle, except it's a little bit loud when it's working. <laughs> First of all, as of the water temperature, when the water is boiled, that's the highest temperature we could ever reach. Right now, the temperature is declining, slow or fast, depends on the room temp. Um, yeah, so even when we talk about use boiling water, we know that in reality, it's not really 100 degrees. And one easy way and a common use way, if you want to lower the water temperature, is to open the lid and let it cool. A technique that I often use when I'm brewing green tea. And if you are very familiar with your kettles and very familiar with, uh, with brewing, oftentimes if I just touch the outside of the kettle, it's hot, don't burn it yourself. I can have a rough idea of is this still like a 95 ish feeling or is it low enough, like a 70, 80 I want to use. So this is something we can do before we even pour the water. The key technical part of using a kettle is actually how do you pour the kettle. I'm using an empty just a guy one to demonstrate, uh, but normally, you know, there's a tea. Two major elements when we're pouring the water from a kettle to the vessel, say guy one, is the height and the volume of water. Let's start with the volume. By volume, I mean how thick the stream is. You can pour in a very controlled, small way. This is almost like a gooseneck waterfall. Around the same height, you can also pour the water with a much much more volume, yeah, much more a thicker, a thicker stream, like this. So what's the two difference between these two ways of pouring water? The thinner water stream means it's slower to fill up. Water has more chance to cool as you fill because it's thinner. It loses the heat faster. And that affects the water temperature we talk about as well as your brewing time because it's slower. Well, if you use a bigger volume, faster pour uh, to brew your tea, you're expecting less water heat loss and shorter impact on your actual brewing time. Second key element of using the kettle is how high are you pouring the water from? So if I pour water from here, or if I pour the water from much lower, Assuming I'm using around the same volume of a pouring stream, obviously the one I pour from much higher will lose more heat than the one I pour from lower. So this is another way you could adjust water temperature when it hits the leaves. Another hidden benefit of a pouring at different height is that could affect the aroma of tea. If I pour from high, the water is more impactful on the leaves, which kind of stimulates the aromatic molecules to jiggle more fears. So you could have bigger aroma of the tea. This is an often used technique when you 
have a tea that you feel like it's a little bit dull or it's a losing its a premium fragrance and I often use this technique to make this tea smell better by pouring from top high and obviously these two elements about the string thickness and the height of the pouring you can use that together to help you reach a desired result for example certain teas you want that rich taste so you don't want to lose that uh, water temperature too much but you also want to provoke this tea's aroma to make that more prominent so you might choose to pour from high but really give it a smash of water a good volume of water fast so you don't lose the heat um, that's something see a gooseneck cannot deliver if you try to use a gooseneck to pour from high because it's a string is already so thin it just lose the heat so this is a technique actually I use often with certain green teas that um, the make isn't so up the level that the, the, the aroma isn't bright enough but it's uh, a pretty nice mouthfeel, uh, pretty robust tea. I would oftentimes use a very high pour to provoke the aroma but I still keep the water temperature relatively high. Another example that I often use is with the rock tea, especially good rock teas. Okay, don't use gooseneck because it's so slow to fill up the guy one. With a good one, it's easy to overbrew because even though you're doing instant brew flash infusions, because it's a slow to pour the water in the leaves, you're gonna come out with still very bitter. Uh, very bitter yan cha. So if you only have gooseneck kettles and you're brewing yan cha, you might have to consider reduce the, uh, the leave amount that we suggest. So when I brew yan cha, especially a good good yan cha, I for sure need boiling water and I always pour with a thick water flow as well as a low pour. In that case, I can get the best pour out of the yan cha and, a, and pour that out as a flash infusion very fast, no bitterness, only the full bodiness of the tea. Okay, this is a bonus for you. Thank you for sticking around. And the next little mini point, mini, <laughs> the next little technique I want to mention is subtle but also very useful when you are brewing Kung Fu tea is where do you plant the water to land in the Gai Wan? What I'm trying to say is do you pour the water onto the leaf directly? Or pour it around the Gai Wan? This technique further lower the brewing temperature of the water by pouring the water onto the guy one so the tea has a, a buffer. Then later on the tea slowly absorbed and emerged in the water. Well, if you want to keep that high temperature, you obviously want to make sure that uh, your water is poured directly on the leaves. Whew. Are you feeling a little bit dizzy by all the things I've been talking about? All these uh, three little techniques, so you can use them crisscross in different combinations for the desired uh, uh, effect on the tea. Um, it needs some practice for sure. Again, the reason I love uh, this low-end <laughs> low kettle way more than those $100 gooseneck kettles is because this gives me a full control of the pouring of the water temperature while gooseneck is very limited 
uh, especially in terms of water temperature, is significantly lower it. Of course, if uh, gongfu tea is not something major in your tea life, gooseneck kettle is totally fine with brewing all kinds of tea. But if you are into gongfu tea, or uh, you're someone who'd love to improve your tea brewing skills, I think it's uh, beneficial to practice your control with your hand. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is only the episode one of this series where I share pro tips on how to brew a better cup of Kung Fu tea. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Be sure to comment below if you have any questions about tea brewing or just sharing your experience. Your feedbacks and comments really help me navigate what are the video I want to do, what are the questions I want to answer. Until next time, keep steeping. Thank you.